Good evening, Rolling Meadows. This is the May 14th, 2019 City of Rolling Meadows City Council meeting. We are uh, beginning at 7.30 p.m. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. With the Girl Scout Troop 45952, please come forward. They will be leading us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Ladies, when you're ready, we'll start. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Clerk, please call the roll. Cannon. Here. Bud Metz. Present. Majikas. Here. Gallo. Here. Banger. Here. Diastas. Present. Williams. Here. <laughs> Seven present, none absent. There is a quorum. Therefore, members of the audience are reminded that the proceedings are being videotaped for current and future broadcasts over the city's cable television network. The first order of business is to approve the minutes of the April 23rd, 2019 City Council meeting. Is there a motion to approve those meetings? Ms. Majikas has made that. Mr. Budmatz has seconded it. Are there any corrections, additions, or deletions? Seeing none. The question is, shall the minutes be approved? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and the minutes are approved. Uh, this brings us to the mayor's report. Uh, it has been a busy three weeks in Rolling Meadows. My wife is telling me after tonight that the 20 hours a week or extra thousand hours a year that I'm going to be home. She's not sure what she's going to do with me. So uh, we had a fundraiser for PETA PETA um, for the Community Events Foundation, and that was well attended. We had the community showcase. Uh, I want to thank, uh, I believe I saw uh, Alderman Banger and Majikis were there. Uh, it had been moved from a Saturday to a Thursday. Um, the attendance, we had 40 businesses there and uh, it was a good time. I would encourage residents to have the opportunity to go out there in the future. Um, for those of you around this weekend, we had a grand opening of Daisy's Restaurant, which is right down the street here on Kirchhoff Road. They have some amazing breakfast items and some lunch items and it's uh, one of the new restaurants that will be coming in, that are in town. For those of you this weekend, we had, uh, I tell you, the, the town was sort of jumping there. We had the pancake breakfast. Thank you to the Rolling Meadows Fire Department because they make the pancakes and sausage every year. And then uh, from there, we went to the plant sale for the uh, seniors. And from there, we went to the historical society that was uh, had an open house. From there, it was resource uh, center days at the family days, where this year, uh, unfortunately, I couldn't flip any burgers, but there were, I believe, Chief, 500 hamburgers, 120 hot dogs. Um, I've been involved with the resource center since when, I think it was 2002 was when we first uh, <coughs> came there. So it was a great, uh, uh, a great time, and um, Crime Stoppers has had the opportunity to work with those folks for, for many years. I just want to say uh, thank you for those that did attend those events. They are appreciated. Are there any ward reports? Mr. Banger. Thank you. Um, uh, Rolling Meadows Community Garden uh, kicked off, off their uh, season on Saturday. I try to time it with the uh, uh, garden club's plant sale. Uh, the weather didn't quite cooperate, but uh, e even in the few days since then, uh, we've had a lot of gardeners uh, come out there. 
and uh, get their plots fired up. If anybody's interested in community garden plots, it's not too late. Uh, we actually lost eight people this year and we gained uh, 12 or 13 back. I still have a couple phone calls from these past couple days to respond to. Uh, so we've, we've been growing again this year. Uh, I did want to thank uh, Public Works. They've dropped off a load of topsoil and two loads of wood chips for us. Uh, and they have each year, so that's a great collaboration between the city and, and the community garden. Uh, I, I often give uh, beekeeping status reports and uh, all the bees in uh, rolling meadows that I know of uh, died off in the winter uh, as, as soon as November last year. And uh, my son Jackson and I got our new bees Saturday and, and dumped uh, six hives worth of uh, bee, bees around the city. We've got uh, one on the west side and, and uh, four scattered through this side of town here. Uh, so we've got, got approximately, I don't know, uh, that's that's 20 pounds of bees that we dumped so let's just say uh, several hundred thousand uh, bees out there pollinating um and and i'm going to say that's a good thing if you're interested in uh in beekeeping in rolling meadows i'll i'll uh i'll be available in an advisory capacity going forward um i also want to take this opportunity to just thank uh citizens of uh, rolling meadows and ward five for uh your support and for electing me um it, it has been uh, quite an experience. Everybody I know that I talk to about politics, which is uh, I do that quite often. I always I always uh, suggest run for office, do something, something, be on a board or or be on a on a council. Start small or or start as big as you want. Um, it, it, it opens your eyes. Uh, local government is amazing because I mean this is uh, this is what you see when your garbage gets picked up when you call nine one one. Um, when you're looking for your street to be repaired, I, I think there's there's something to be said for the people on city council certainly that to serve, and in, on on all the committees that serve. It's a it's a, a lot of time and and sacrifice. Uh, I wanted to thank uh, uh, our former mayor Rooney. He sat me down after the first couple of weeks and kind of explained how things worked. Uh, it was an eye opener. Also Barry, Melissa. Uh, all the chiefs uh, throughout the years. I think there's been five of them uh, that have been, uh, instructed me, me in their various uh, functions. Uh, the staff that I've come into contact, uh, my colleagues past and present, I've learned so much from uh, people in the past and you know I was just rattling off the people I have served with, Buskey, Larson, Allen, Hill, Veenbaugh, uh, everybody up in the dais uh, today um, and I, and I, uh, I thank you for uh, you know support or challenging me uh, to think more or better uh, and I and I think it was uh, it, it's it's good it, it's a good it's been a good experience um, I, I've got all sorts of plans uh, even after I get out of here tonight I I was telling uh, uh, Alderman Gallo I planted 30 tomato plants uh, r right before I came up here uh, today so <laughs> I'm excited about uh, getting back in the garden. I've got a kid getting married in July, so I've uh, I've got a lot to uh, turn my attention to after I'm done with council. But once again, thanks for the opportunity to serve. It's been a great eight years, uh, and I'll, I'll 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 be around. Thank you. Any other ward reports? This is the part of the. Uh, meeting where the meeting is now open to the public for 20 minutes. In order to secure the rights of the citizens of the city to a fair and just representation before the elected officials and to guarantee to the elected officials an order and dignified form in which conduct the city's business, no person shall be allowed to engage in any activity that will disrupt or or the orderly proceedings of the city council. Poor rules of procedures the public is to address the city council and the fact that no member of the city council responds does not mean that the city council or any member thereof agrees or disagrees with their comments. In order to attain this objective, the following rules of conduct are hereby established. Any person who seeks to address the city council at this time for public comment shall be permitted to speak only upon recognition of the presiding officer and such person shall adhere to the following provisions. Each person addressing the city council shall state their name and address for the record. Each person shall be granted no more than five minutes of the allotted 20 minutes in order to address the city council. 
Questions and or commentary shall be limited to the city business. Comments supporting or opposing a nominated person's candidacy for elective office of the city shall be out of order. Commentary shall be directed to the presiding officer unless the presiding officer permits that the individual to address the council members or other city officers present. Discussion shall take place in a professional manner which displays mutual respect. Profanity shall not be used in any form. Uh, the first signatory for tonight is Vinny, 2011 Martin, uh, topic is garden. Yes. Thank you for coming forward tonight. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, on behalf of myself and the William Mills community here, we'd like to thank you for opening the gardening plots and for us. And um, I would like to say, you know, like, that you've been a great success for us. Since the since we started in 2004, um, it's been a very success, and um, I know that Rob Banger is leaving, but I would like to take over, if it's possible, I would like to take over the community garden if it's possible. Thank you. Thank you for coming forward. Uh, the next signatory is Greg Swiderski. Could you please I, state your name and address for the record, please? It's Greg Swiderski, 2707 St. James in Rolling Meadows. I'll make this brief. Um, I like to read, and currently I'm reading Jimmy Buffett's uh, 50 Years of Being a Pirate, and I found a great quote that I think not only adheres to the current council, the future council, but our constituents. Your life is not a performance, but your performance is part of your life. And with that, I have a brief statement. The definition in Webster's Dictionary of Honorable, in accordance with or characterized by principles of honor, upright, worthy of honor, and high respect. Mayor Prina, while I may not have always agreed with your stances on issues, I respected your decisions. I did so because you have shown that you and your predecessor, Mayor Tom Rooney, are honorable men. You and your administration have done many positive things to help make Rolling Meadows a more positive community. You and I have talked in stores, parking lots, and other places about city activities and sports. I have found you to be a stand-up man. My hope is that the new city council and mayor will all act, and I stress, with the honor to do the best for all the people of Rolling Meadows. Thank you, and thank you outgoing city council members for your service. Thank you. Thank you. Next uh, signatory is Annette Sassman. <clears throat> Wish we could have got you a little closer, Annette. Hi, it's Annette Zaffrin, 2309 Central Road, Rolling Meadows. I just wanted to express my sincere thanks on behalf of my family and all of those who are uh, constituents and residents of Rolling Meadows for the great job that our past aldermen and mayor have done. I, I Not as eloquent as the speaker before, but his words were very beautiful and well intended. And I thank you so much for the time and the effort and the hours that you've put in. It's always hard in anyone's life to give even more, but you all seem to have done that and done it well. And I do express my thanks. There's times that we didn't see eye to eye on different issues, but that's what local government is about, differences of opinion. And I, I think we've all mastered that and are coming to some great resolves through our processes of being able to speak up and speak out. So again, thank you for a job well done, 
We're sad to see you leave, but hopefully you'll continue to be part of Rolling Meadows in some other capacities. And to the new aldermen and mayor coming in, we wish you the best of luck. And we know that there's going to be a bright future ahead for Rolling Meadows. It's being left into good hands. So congratulations to those new people. And again, thank you for all that you've done for Rolling Meadows. Thank you for coming forward. Uh, the next signatory is Mark Miller. Hello, I'm Mark Melhoff, 3003 Hawk Lane, Raleigh Meadows. I'm asking a question about Wag Wagmer that's doing uh, Station 16. They're hauling in the fill on that site. They're getting it from uh, Palatine, which was the old Menards. Do you know if there's any manifest on that fill? And if there's a soil report, so you don't know if it's contaminated or, or if it's suitable to build on, or if they're going to end up after the compaction, if it's passed in compaction or not, if we end up undercutting it and putting stone in and or concrete at the cost of the city. Or if it's contaminated, we, we don't know that. We have to find out from the builder because that could cost up to $2,000 per load to get rid of versus $200 a load. That's all I got, thanks. Thank you. Council moves to his first order of business, which is the consent ordinance is in for the second reading. Ordinance A, number 19-30, is to approve the liquor license applica application for Class B1 liquor licenses for the corporation doing business as Rolling Meadows Marathon at 4200 Kirchhoff Road. This ordinance, if adopted, would approve an application for a Class B1 liquor license. <laughs> this liquor license application is being requested by Corporation Doing Business in Rolling Meadows Marathon. This business currently has a D1 liquor license, which authorizes the sale of beer and wine. The business wants to expand the selection of alcoholic beverages. They are able to sell to include all liquor. This would require a new liquor license classification. If the application is, approve, is approved, to award Class B1 liquor licenses to the marathon, it will reduce the city's D1 authorized licenses from five to four and increase the city's authorized Class B1 liquor license to one. Is there a motion to adopt this ordinance? Mr. Bud Metz has made that. Mr. Diastas has seconded it. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Cannon. Yes. Bud Matz. Yes. Majikas. Yes. Gallo. Yes. Banger. Yes. Diastas. Yes. Williams. Yes. Seven in favor, not approved. This opposed. This ordinance is approved. This brings us to Ordinance B, number 19-31, is to approve the liquor license application for a Class B1 liquor license for Rolling Meadow Sitco at 2300 Plum Grove Road. This ordinance, if adopted, would approve an application for a Class B1 liquor license. This license application is being requested by Rolling Meadows Sitco. This business currently has a Class D1 liquor license and authorizes the sale of beer and wine. The business wants to expand the selection of alcohol beverages that they are able to sell to include all liquor. This would require a new liquor license classification. If the application is approved to award a Class B1 liquor license to Sitco, it will reduce the city's Class D1 authorized license from four to three and increase the city's authorized B1 liquor licenses to two. Is there a motion to adopt this ordinance? So moved. Uh, thank you. And Rob has seconded that. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Bud Matt. Yes. Majikas. Yes. Gallo. Yes. Banger. Yes. Diastas. Yes. Williams. Yes. Cannon. Yes. Seven in favor, none opposed. This ordinance is approved. This brings us to old business. This is the motion to approve payments of the bill on warrants for 514-19. <clears throat> is there, this next item of business will approve the warrants for the May 14th, 2019 as presented by the Finance Department. Is there a motion, motion to approve the warrants? So moved. Thank you, Mr. Banger. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Majikas. Yes. Gallo. Yes. Banger. Yes. 
Diestas. Yes. Williams. Yes. Cannon. Yes. Bud Mint. Yes. Seven in favor, not opposed. I now need a motion to deviate because this is the time where we will be changing the, the changing of the guard. Do I have a motion to achieve to deviate from the agenda to swear in the mayor and council members? So moved, Mr. Mr. Mayor. Jackis has made that. Mr. Cannon has seconded it. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? We will now deviate. Mr. Krumsack. We have the wireless for this, and we want to say farewell to everybody as they go. So we don't have a big order on this, um, but it also gives an opportunity for those aldermen and the mayor um, to actually say goodbye to everybody. So we would like to actually start with Mayor Prana. Some of you know what's in here, but uh, I'll get used to it. Um, we do appreciate everything we had Alderman Prana did as an alderman, and then he became Mayor Prana um, for the last two years. And for that, for the entire city, we do appreciate everything that you've done. He's not dropping off. He still has to do stuff on community events and some other pieces. We're working on his 20 hours a week. So we do appreciate everything. And again, from the city of Rolling Meadows, this goes to you. Could I have my Elizabeth Roman come on up? I need some help. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, since Grandpa only has one arm, can you guys open this up for me? <coughs> Go ahead, each. Each of you take a side. We used a lot of tape. <laughs> this is better than Christmas morning with Dad huh? and Mom and Grandma and Grandpa. Oh, here, I got to start. <laughs> okay. Figure out where this goes next, right? <laughs> if you guys want to, you can take it down. I'll have a few words to say. Thank you. Uh, normally, I'm sorry. I'm I'm a right-handed person, and being a learning to be a southpaw this last few weeks has been great. Here you, you know. The garbage. Uh, first off, I have to uh, thank God for giving me the opportunity to be here all these years. It's been 30 years ago that I started this journey of being involved with the city, so. I want to thank you. I have to thank my wife. We're going to celebrate 38 years. I'm not sure what she's going to do with me, but you know, like I said, it's a, a meeting here. There was always a joke about, okay, we're going to a meeting with mayors in this city. We're going to go see a congressman here or a senator here. So I, I wanted to thank you for that. I also wanted to uh, reach out to some members of the council because when you become mayor as you as all of you should probably know on Fridays there's a packet that comes out that everyone can see and you can see what's happening in the coming weeks and anybody in the United States can go take a look at our packets uh, to my daughter uh, Jill who's uh, streaming this out of Indianapolis and Jenna who's in Fort Campbell Kentucky thank you tonight I uh, I appreciate the support you gave me over the years but there's some folks that on Fridays you would reach out to try and see what's happening every week to build things. I do have to thank uh, Laura Majikis, who sort of became my right-hand person on economic development because of the things that we worked on. She helped me with businesses and we had more than our share of meetings. So this year we should probably have newer remodel 10 new businesses, places that the residents can go for lunch or dinner and breakfast that will bring revenue to us. So I wanted to thank you for that. Alderman Gallo, when you were a, a new uh, alderman, I reached out to you because I had an organization that wanted to put a performing arts center in the Dominic's property, and I'd been working on the conversation with that, and thank you for coming to that meeting. I had staff there. Obviously, that would have been my first choice to have a performing arts center with uh, all the different stores and things that we could have done. 
uh, Alder at Bud Mats, you did help with uh, taking the lead on uh, trying to uh, work with the post office company. It took a year, but we did get some folks there. So I appreciate you working on that. So, I mean, we, we try to go forward all the time. It will be a mix as you go forward. The finance department. Well, folks, when you open your tax bills in August, the part that says City of Rolling Meadows, your taxes will have gone down from 4.7 to 2.7. And that's because of the finance department and all the other departments that work so hard to put it together because that's good news for whether you're buying, selling, or you're a realtor. So not many places can say that they've gone down. Our financial rating has gone up, which was good because we got a lower rate on bonds. I also want to thank again the fire department, police department, and public works for all the grant money that has flowed in. I know a lot of you have gone down uh, Kirchhoff Road, and I know that it's not a lot of fun, but guess what? Be, through their efforts, 80% of it's being paid by the state, and the city of Rolling Meadows only has to pay 20% uh, of it. So that's a, a good job by them. There's some good things coming up. Uh, reps will have their first one-year anniversary how long did we all wait to get a restaurant in downtown meadows and they will be doing a barbecue in the park at pig roast and come october the first gaming and license which was stadium will be uh doing an Oktoberfest. so there's good things coming forward so i just wanted to share those with you and i'm going to leave you with one final thought You know, every day I try to come up with something positive, and those that you have seen me over the years, and some of, I, some of the folks that I see out here are people that I've either coached in soccer or basketball or softball, or we've, the Community Events Foundation, you know, has really been a sparkle, because I've seen them grow from, what did we have, five or six in the beginning, and we probably have 30 boots on the ground folks that work all the time. And this is a poem that uh, I sort of, look at every day and I wanted to share with you <laughs> to laugh often and much to win the respect of the intelligent people and the affection of children to earn the appreciation of honest critics and endure the betrayal of false friends <clears throat> to appreciate beauty and to find beauty in others to leave the world a bit better whether by a healthy child a garden patch or a redeemed social condition to know that one life has breathed easier because you have lived here. This is to have succeeded. Ralph Waldo Emerson. So Meadows, that's the charge I leave for you. Let us leave this place one place better than we did the day before. Thank you. We do appreciate that, and thank you. Um, we would like to next call up Alderman Majikus. Um, obviously, Alderman Majikus is still on the Community Event Foundation, does a lot of work on that. She's still on the Economic Development Committee, so she's not going too far. She just gets to sit on the back uh, table a little bit more. Um, obviously, the same thing that we would like to do, thank her for her service. Um, with Brenda Buskey uh, back there, we do want to mention when uh, Larry passed away, Alderman Majikis uh, took over and has been part of the um, council <coughs> since then. And we do appreciate all your service. We will see you soon. Oh my gosh, I wonder what it could be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It also says praying his way. Thank you. Well, I didn't prepare anything, um, so I'm just going to speak from the heart. Which, first off, thank you, Barry. Um, Barry, I think you've been a fabulous city manager, and I can count you now as a friend. And I will miss seeing you as often as I did, but again, I'm not going anywhere. Um, 
It has been an honor to represent the third ward, and I congratulate Kevin O'Brien. I know he's going to do a great job. He's going to be fair and reasonable. And um, remember, 8 a.m. on Sunday, you do get calls, so just letting you know now. Um, but I want to really thank my husband for being the sport he's been for all these years to allow it to go by, that the meetings I have to run to at the last minute. So thank you so much. You've been my rock, and I appreciate it. Um, to the council that I've been with in the past and the present, we've had our ups and downs. Um, but I look forward to the council doing wonderful things, and um, I wish you all the best of luck. Don, Rob, Rob, Mike, I miss you guys a lot. Judy, <laughs> Melissa, the chiefs, staff, everybody. I love all you guys. You've become my family, and I just thank you, and thank you for, to the residents. Thank you very much. Alderman Banger. Um, Alderman Banger has been called all different kinds of names, <laughs> Banger. Well, there are all different ones out there. Um, I do want to remind him he does need his application for the beehives. Um, again, we do want to appreciate everything that Alderman Banger has done. Um, but one other thing that you guys don't know is not just doing community gardens and bees and actually growing really interesting cucumbers that look more like tomatoes. <laughs> um, but we do want to mention that he's actually been the city council liaison for the library. So we do appreciate all that you've done for that. Um, obviously, the phase two of the construction is continuing on. And we hope that we will see you around. Um, he's also come up with some other ideas, not just giving water to his community gardens because he had a big um, tub at one point. Now you actually have a real spigot. Um, he's also watched a lot of the uh, wildlife go in and take the Dunkin' Donuts if they're actually in the dumpster and start eating them by the area. But we do want to appreciate everything that he has done and he is staying involved, obviously, with community gardens. If you have other little plots that we can think of, we might ask you to build some more two by fours in addition. We do want to appreciate everything that you've continued to do. Um, that didn't sound too good out the building door. But again, your biggest um, event is coming up in July um, for your, your daughter's wedding. But we do appreciate everything. Um, you can blame Tom Rooney for having you read all different kinds of uh, books about government. It didn't come from my office. So again, thank you from the city of Illinois. Thank you. Bailey, why don't you come up with this? <laughs> <laughs> I forgot to uh, thank my beautiful wife, um, and I don't tear up usually, sorry, but uh, this is the end of uh, me coming home uh, late at night, all jacked up on Mountain Dew, <laughs> and babblingly, babbling ceaselessly uh, to Laura, who, who actually was pretty uninterested <laughs> about all the, all the th things that went on uh, council. Uh, in the evening, uh, Bailey, Jack, and my son Jackson back there for uh, putting up with me also. But uh, once again, I said mo most of what I wanted to say at uh, uh, my ward report. But once again, thanks for being uh, a wonderful city. Uh, I come from a city of around 300 people in uh, south central Iowa. Uh, good or bad, Rolling Meadows, population 24,099 as of the 2010 census, is scarily similar uh, to New Virginia, Iowa. Uh, you know, grad having kids that graduated with 600 and some uh, classmates and me graduating 56 kids, uh, the, the, the same, the same uh, small town feel, and I'm going to say that's a good thing. I love small towns. I love going to the grocery store, the community garden, uh, basically any place in town and seeing neighbors, friends, uh, friends from church. Uh, you, you can't go anywhere. A lot of pe people say that's a bad thing. I'm going to say that's a good thing. So, uh, so keep up that that small town feel. I really appreciate it. So, thanks again for uh, putting up with me for eight years. And obviously, the uh, final goodbye or farewell, other term would be to Alderman Rob Williams. Obviously, when uh, Tim Veenbos left, 
you stepped up at your interview with the mayor and were approved by the city council. We do appreciate everything that you have done. Melissa and I have long conversations with you with budgeting in Duns and Brand Street and some of the other pieces, but from the city of Rolling Meadows, we do appreciate everything you do. And we knew you way before you were an alderman with Fairfax Village with your roads. So again, we thank you for your service and if you want to come up. This one does actually say pray no way. Just get up to that. <laughs> Oh, you, got, you got to do the corner and then it'll. You just have to. See, we have leftover Christmas. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I. Uh, I, like the folks before me, uh, want to thank uh, everybody here. The, uh, it's only been 10 months or so that, uh, that I've been an alderman, and uh, it's been a real learning experience for me. Uh, the thing that I think strikes me the most is that you've got some awfully, awfully good people working for you on staff uh, here in Rolling Meadows, and they do a wonderful job of supporting the alderman, of uh, seeing that your trash gets picked up and your streets get repaired, and uh, I think that all in all they do an absolutely wonderful job. Um, I'm sorry that, uh, that I could have moved on, but uh, as, as an alderman, because uh, I still have a lot to learn. But uh, I do appreciate all of the help I've gotten from people like you, Mr. Banger, Mike, you've been a good friend. And uh, John, you sat there by my elbow, and when I've had a stupid question to ask you, what's going on here? And you, you answered it, and wonderful. Um, I thank all of you. It's a wonderful town. I've lived here uh, since uh, 1976, and uh, I've found out just how wonderful the town really is in the last 10 months. I thank you all. That is the uh, farewell section of this tonight, and now we're going to turn this over to current Alderman Joe Gale, who will now do the next section of the meeting. Thank you all for coming out this evening and helping bid farewell to the colleagues of mine on the dais. I appreciate their time here, their investment in energy, their faith toward the city, their goodwill toward the residents, and more importantly, the residents' goodwill in return back to us. Um, I didn't prepare much to say other than I'm looking very forward to the next group of council men and women who have come to support the community as the community turned out and supported us in this last election time. It's about your participation that has made all of this possible. And with that, I'd like to turn to somebody who's helped me see the possibilities in this for swearing in. And that is a good friend of mine. Her name is Ketke Steffen. She's been an 18 year long assistant attorney for the Cook County 13th District Courthouse here in Rolling Meadows, and she's currently a presiding judge. And so with that, I'd like to have her help me with the ceremony. So, do you want to hold this or should we go to join? Okay. Let's <laughs> cooperation for us. I, Joseph Gallo. I, Joseph Gallo. Having been elected to the office of mayor. Having been elected to the office of mayor. In the city of Rolling Meadows, County of Cook, and the state of Illinois. In the city of Rolling Meadows, County of Cook, and the state of Illinois. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States of America. That I will support the Constitution of the United States of America and the Constitution of the State of Illinois. And the Constitution of the State of Illinois. And I will faithfully discharge. And I will faithfully discharge. The duties of the Office of Mayor. The duties of the Office of Mayor. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. Congratulations. Thank you. Now I think
think it's important that we recognize the new men and women, and some of those who are currently still here with us. Thank you for coming. Um, we'll start in the chronological order. So, Alderman Ken, if I could have you come up, swear you in. Yes. Mm -hmm. No, we're not swearing in Alderman Ken. How about Alderman Budmans? I've been sworn in already. Okay. <laughs> then we'll start with uh, the next one to be up, Mr. Kevin O'Brien. Say that would be quite a bit. We do have a cheat sheet, but I was gonna say that it was gonna be quite a bit of swearing in this evening. So, you repeat after me. I, Kevin O'Brien. I, Kevin O'Brien. Having been elected to the office of Alderman Ward 3. Having been elected to the office of Alderman Ward 3. In the city of Rolling Meadows, County of Cook. In the city of Rolling Meadows, County of Cook. In the state of Illinois, do solemnly swear. In the state of Illinois, do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States of America. That I will support the Constitution of the United States of America. And that I will faithfully, and that and I will faithfully discharge the duties of the office of alderman. And I will faithfully discharge the duties of the office of alderman. Ward three to the best of my ability. Ward three to the best of my ability. Congratulations. John Bassesi. Welcome. So we'll have you stand on that side so you can raise your right arm. I, John Bassesi. I, John Bassesi. Have been elected to the office of Alderman Ward 5. Have been elected to the office of Alderman Ward 5. In the city of Rolling Meadows, County of Cook. In the city of Rolling Meadows, County of Cook. In the state of Illinois. In the state of Illinois. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States of America. That I will support the Constitution of the United States of America. And I will faithfully discharge the duties in office. And the Constitution of the United States of Illinois. <laughs> and the Constitution of the State of Illinois. And I will faithfully discharge the duties of office of Alderman Ward 5. And I will faithfully discharge the duties of the office of Alderman Ward 5. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. I, Lara Sinoika. I, Lara Sinoika. Having been elected to the office of Alderman Ward 7. Having been elected to the office of Alderman Ward 7. In the city of Rolling Meadows, County of Cook. In the city of Rolling Meadows, County of Cook. In state of Illinois. In state of Illinois. Do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. Do you solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States of America? And the Constitution of the State of Illinois. And the Constitution of the State of Illinois. And I will faithfully discharge the duties of the Office of Alderman Ward 7. And I will faithfully discharge the duties of the Office of Alderman Ward 7. To the best of my abilities. To the best of my abilities. So now we can take a, a recess. Everybody can mingle. Enjoy some cake. It's in the back.
Oh, we're on here now. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to call this back to order. Would the clerk please call roll? Cannon. Here. Bud Mintz. Present. O'Brien. Here. Bassesi. Here. Diestas. Present. Sonoika. Here. Okay. So, maybe wait. I'll wait for you when Andrew comes back. Moving along, we have the consent ordinances, and next on this consent ordinance in for the first reading consists of two items, D and E. This week, I'm going to be pulling off um, one of those items, and that is E, the ordinance for Jawa. We're going to have the council discuss this at a later date. Is there a motion to proceed? So moved. Alderman Cannon, thank oh, you. Sorry. So I'm sorry. Good. Thank you. And Alderman Sonica, thank you. Ordinance 19-00 approve vehicle equipment disposal. This ordinance if adopted would allow for the disposal of items that have been determined to be surplus by Public Works and Fire Department. Is there a motion to move forward with this? Uh, so moved. Uh, discussion? Is, is, can I have a motion to discuss? Motion to discuss. I'm over here. It's okay, take time. That's what's throwing me off. I beg your pardon. Is there any discussion? Yes. Um, so I had some questions with regards to how the um, auction will be uh, set forth. And when I contacted city staff, they said that they would not have uh, full answers until after today's meeting. Um, so I would like to make a motion to postpone until uh, the, May 20, the May 28th meeting for this ordinance. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Alderman Budman, you second that? Okay. So then we would vote to postpone this to no the question. Yes. Um, to staff, um, does postponing this have any uh, any consequences, or it's just we're getting rid of this equipment and? Uh, no, we, we could either postpone it or if the questions could be answered, we could answer those before second reading, whatever the council chooses. Okay. Any further discussion? Um, Mayor? Yes. I would, I would think we could probably uh, vote, uh, at least I'm ready to vote on it, vote on it now and get whatever questions answered before the second reading, just to move it along. Alderman Sinonica? If we are to post, I mean, I'm sorry, if we are to then vote on the first reading and then uh, have further discussion of the second reading, will we have the opportunity to postpone further if, uh, or to amend mm -hmm. the ordinance if necessary after receiving information from staff? We, we would, if we would have support from a second on that, and okay. then a vote too. Then uh, I'm fine with also voting uh, for the first uh, for the first reading. Withdraw your motion. I would like to withdraw my motion to postpone. Okay, so then the question becomes to vote on the original ordinance D, which is approved vehicle and equipment disposal. So moved, Miss Mayor. Thank you. Second. Second. Can we have a? Can we call the the vote, please? Sure. Cannon. Yes. Bud Mitz. Yes. O'Brien. Yes. Bassesi. Yes. Diestas. Yes. Sunoika. Yes. So all in favor? That's five yeses and no nays. Six. 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 Excuse me, I can't count now. <laughs> all right. So I should still have to read the second one? Yeah. Really? Okay. Well, so I, I pulled I pulled the second one, the ordinance 19-00, <coughs> appoint Mayor Joe Gallo to the Joint Action Water Agency, Jawa, and um, I pulled, yes. Motion, you have to have a motion 
And a second, and then discussion. Please withdraw. I'm He's withdrawn. No, withdraw. Mm -hmm. He's going to pull item E. Oh, yes. yes. Withdraw the polling? I'm pulling from this evening's agenda. Oh, okay. Yeah. And so I, I pulled this because I'd like to give the council time to have a conversation about um, the appointments and who might be necessary or, or more appropriate in what case. And we may find that it's going to be fine as is, but we just want to have the conversation as a council. So that moves us on now to consent resolutions. The next item are uh, the consent resolutions, and it consists of nine items, F through N. At this time, I'm also pulling G, H, and I from this meeting. And again, it's going to follow the same conversation where we will allow the council to discuss these in private before making determinations as to who the appointments belong to. So that then leaves six on the agenda for the consent agenda for the resolutions. That consists of F, J, K, L, and M, N. Does anybody wish to pull any of those? No? Nope. Seeing none, the chair declares in order for one motion to consider all resolutions in the motion without debate. Is there such a motion? So moved. Alderman. Alderman Badger, or Alderman, or Alderman Bob, Bob Mance, and Alderman O'Brien second. Okay, so <coughs> resolution number 19R-63, approve a contract for communications and internet services. This resolution, if adopted, would allow city to utilize Comcast to provide communications and internet services. Resolution K, number 19R-68, award a contract for 2019 thermal plastic pavement striping services. This resolution, if adopted, would authorize the city to award a contract for thermal plastic pavement striping and markings. $50,000 is budgeted to the local roads fund and pavement markings thermal plastic paint in fiscal year 2019. Resolution L, number 19-R-69, award a contract for pavement paint striping services. This resolution, if adopted, would authorize the city to award a contract for pavement paint striping and markings of 2018. There's a $50,000 budget in the local roads fund pavement liquid paint and the thermal plastic striping for 2019. M, resolution number 19R-70, authorize a contract for the purchase of a 2019 Ford F350 pickup replacement Rolling Meadows 183 T321 2000 Ford F350. This resolution, if adopted, would authorize the purchase of a new 2019 pickup truck for the Public Works Department, which will be utilized by the Street Division. The vehicle has been reviewed and supported for replacement by the Vehicle Replacement Committee, and funds are identified in the 2019 fiscal year budget this vehicle will replace the existing pickup truck T321, which is 12 years old and has approximately 62,000 miles. N, resolution 19R-71, award a contract for 2019 fire hydrant painting. This resolution, is, if adopted, would authorize the award the contract for $19,575 for sandblasting, priming, and painting 225 city fire hydrants. This is an annual maintenance project which proposes the paint approximately 1,500 city fire hydrants over the next six years to seven year period. Again, the question is, shall all seven of these be, six of these be, be adopted? Will the clerk please call the roll? O'Brien. Yes. Bassesi. Yes. Diastas. Yes. Tanoika. Yes. Cannon. Yes. Bud Metz. Yes. With six in favor and none opposed, these pass. Other business and reports. I have a question. Yes. Um, G, H, and I were pulled. Or is there any discussion on those? Or when that, what we're going to, I mean, are they postponed? Are they to a next meeting, to a call meeting? I pulled them from this evening's meeting. Understand. And then we're going to circle back and hopefully have a closed session meeting with 
the council in its entirety to discuss these further. <coughs> and then bring them back after we've had full transparent con conversation. Uh -huh. I think we have to pick a date. I'm, I, Jim, Mr. I was good. Mr. Attorney, can, I don't know if these are, uh, can you do a closed session with these? I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. Well, what, for the purposes of tonight, <clears throat> why don't we just pull them as the chair has previously done sure. historically, and we can go from there. Okay, and we don't know when they're coming back to discuss? Well, um, I, I think I, that, I, uh, Mr. Mayor, if I can know. just pipe in, I think that the mayor has stated that it would come after discussion, um, specifically because each of these, um, the ordinance and the uh, three resolutions deal with an elected official and then the city manager, and that's what the mayor Gale was trying to get to. He would like to have discussion with the council about filling those positions and oh, giving I, an opportunity. I actually understand that. And, I, he, and he stated that it would come back after those discussions, so hopefully those discussions will be done at the May 28th meeting, and then we can bring those back um, pretty okay. quickly. Uh, that's, that's what I'm trying to find out. So they would just postpone for one meeting to have a conversation? That is uh, what we're doing it. Okay. That would be the, the ideal. It depends yep. on how we can get around to conversations with everyone on the council. Okay. okay. So moving on to other business and reports. I'm sorry. No. Yeah. I, that leaves no mayor appointments at this time. Uh, proclamation. I do have one of those, actually. Um, <laughs> thank you, Rob. And this proclamation is for National Public Works Week. Whereas public works services provided in our community are an integral part of our citizens' everyday lives. Whereas the quality and effectiveness of these facilities, as well as their planning, design, and construction, are vitally dependent on the efforts and skill of our public works and the importance of the work that they perform. Now, therefore, I, Joe Gallo, Mayor of the City of Rolling Meadows, do hereby proclaim the week of May 19th through through the 25th, 2019, as National Public Works Week. In the City of Rolling Meadows and I call upon all citizens and civic organizations to acquaint themselves with the issues involved in providing public works and to recognize the contributions which public works officials make every day to our health, self, self, our health safety, and comfort and the quality of our lives. Sufficient? Good. Okay. That moves us on to the city clerk's report, which is none. City staff reports, community items of interest. Thank you, Mayor and City Council. This is where the uh, council meeting will slow down because I have plenty. It's May, sorry, that's what happened. Um, and I do have one addition um, that I would like to mention, and I will do that at the end. Obviously, we do want to, um, as the Mayor Prano, who just uh, left the City Council, did mention that we do want to thank everybody who made it to the second annual business and community showcase that was conducted on Thursday, April 25th at the Meridian Banquet. Um, a special thank you goes to all the community event foundation volunteers who made sure that the bags were there and all the vendors were um, supported. We do want to also mention, and again, thank you to everybody who participated in the Saturday, April 27th prescription drug take back event here at City Hall, and we do want to remind everybody that we do have a little gray box here at City Hall um, that you can still drop off prescription drugs. We do want to mention that during this um, event, even with the bad weather when it came in with uh, all the wind, rain, sleet, everything else, we collected on that collection day about 70 uh, pounds of expired, unwanted, unused, and potentially dangerous controlled substances. Um, we do want to also mention to people that thank you to everybody who attended the Earth Day activities on Sunday, May 5th. This was the makeup day for the April 27th during the uh, bad storm. And I know that Karen Gill was here earlier, but uh, if you'd like to participate in the Environmental Committee, please uh, contact the city and we'll make sure that um, Karen knows about it. We do want to mention, just like Alderman, I mean, Mayor Prina stated earlier, we do want to thank everybody who made it to the Pancake Breakfast, Garden Club, Hometown <coughs> Plant and Craft Sale, and the Museum Open House that was conducted on Saturday, May 11th. Reminder that the sprinkler restrictions are set to begin on May 15th, so tomorrow. To conserve water throughout the community, lawn sprinkling is prohibited between <laughs> noon and 6 p.m. daily and on consecutive days. Obviously, we do want to remind people that we have some flyers in the back, but the 17th annual Dunkin' Donuts Cop on a Rooftop promotion 
will take place on Friday, May 17th from 5 a.m. to noon. We have 2 p.m., but usually by noon um, the officers leave. But it will be at the Dunkin' Donuts located at 3350 Kirchhoff Road. During this fundraiser, local police officers and the police chief will be on top of the Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> I can't guarantee what time he's up there. Um, and actually, yeah, and <laughs> if you actually see one of our police officers up there, um, it's one of our detectives. He's really good at collecting, and if you throw him a donut bite, he's pretty good at getting that, too. If you saw last year's YouTube, he did get a, so hopefully uh, he will be back up in there. But we do want to mention all money that is collected for this um, law enforcement torch run for the Special Olympics. Customers, while supplies last, um, we do have different items for free donuts. Um, for additional donations, there might be some lapel pins or um, cups or T-shirts. Um, I do know that some of the supplies have not come in completely, but again, it's a great opportunity to give to the Law Enforcement Torch Run for Special Olympics. Um, and again, that is this Friday, May 17th from 5 a.m. to noonish is really what we're saying. To all those veterans, um, please remind, remember that May 25th or 24th, that Friday night, is the Veterans Dinner. Um, if you have not RSVP'd up to this point in time, call City Hall at 847-394-8500. Again, space is limited. The following day, May 25th, is the first city market. That's the first of the season, as we mentioned. Um, from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the Community Church at 2720 Kirchhoff Road. Also on May 25th, that's Saturday, we do our Memorial Day Parade and Ceremony starting at 11 a.m. on Kirchhoff Road, and it, around 11.30 is when we do the ceremony at the Carillon. Even though Kirchhoff Road is under construction, we are still doing that. Um, hold your fingers, that should be ground a little bit, so it shouldn't be that bad of a walk. But again, that is Saturday, May 25th. We do want to mention that the Meadows Cruise Nights are back thanks to Meadows Christian Fellowship located at 2401 Kirchhoff Road. Um, the cruisers will be around from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. on Fridays starting May 31st and going all the way to September 6th. Please join the Family Fund at 2401 Kirchhoff Road. If you need additional information, please contact <coughs> or visit um, Meadows Fellowship Christian or go to their www.meadowscruisenights.com. Then on June 7th, the fifth annual block party will be conducted on Central Road from 4.30 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. Central Road and the Rolling Meadows High School parking lot <coughs> will be utilized for this year's, for really because of the construction on Kirchhoff Road. Please plan on visiting and watching um, for directional parking signs um, we are using Central Road, but we are also evaluating um, how that works for the block party because depending on what feedback we get, we'll either keep it on Central Road or come back to Kirchhoff Road next year. Obviously, June 17th is the flag retirement ceremony conducted by Scout Troop 168. It will commence at 7 p.m. at the Kimball Hill Park Fire Bowl and Pit. Um, anyone can bring a flag. Uh, that you need to retire to City Hall, we make sure that it actually gets to the event. And then obviously the one other item um, that is on the sheet before I go on to the add-on, um, if you've been following some of the stuff down in uh, Springfield, there's actually a law that's called Scott's Law. And this is a friendly reminder, they're trying to give additional information and actually boost up some of the fines and some of the additional um, items. but. The state of Illinois, Scott's law is also known as the move over law. This um, regulation mandates that when approaching any police or other emergency vehicle stopped along the roadway, you must proceed with due caution. Change lanes if possible and reduce your speed. Please do, not, please do your part and keep our first responders safe. And that also um, deals with the IDOT individuals who are working on the roads too. Scott's Law is named after Chicago Fire Lieutenant Scott Gillian, who was struck and killed on December 23rd, 2000, while assisting at an accident scene. And if you also look at the uh, newspapers, we actually have had more public safety individuals who have been killed this year again. Um, Scott's Law is trying to be hardened. 
The one item that I do want to add, which is not on your sheet, and we will have this uh, during the rest of the uh, year, but we do want to mention that the Rolling Meadows Environmental <coughs> Committee is hosting a casual eight-mile bike ride prior to any of the city markets um, at the community church. You do meet at the community church at 2720 Kirchhoff Road. The first ride, again, will be Saturday, May 25th. It starts at 9 a.m. Um, bring friends, family, dogs, if you have a dog who's really good at riding with you. And the Rolling Meadows Environmental Committee will have the route set up, and it's a great way to ride with others and explore the city of Rolling Meadows. Um, rides will be led by experienced cyclists who conduct um, a 10-minute equipment safety check before each ride. Helmets are required um, to participate in this ride, and as we want to say, these are also the same days as city markets. So the first one that we said is Saturday, May 25th. The next one will be June 22nd. Then it will be July 20th, August 24th, and the final one will be at September 28th. And again, these do start at 9 a.m. With that, Mayor and City Council, those are items of interest for this meeting. Thank you, Manager Crumstock. Moving on to the 2018 fourth quarter financials. Should this be Ms. Thank Gallagher? Thank you, Mr. Mayor and City Council. Uh, within the packet uh, for night tonight's meeting, we have the fiscal year 2018 fourth quarter financial statements. They are unaudited, and they are results of operations as of December 31st, 2018. I'm going to give just a high-level overview because it is a 23-page report. It's quite detailed. Uh, but just uh, kind of cover some of the highlights for uh, the City Council and members of the audience. Uh, the 2018 audit is nearing completion. The data submitted in this fourth quarter report does include most of the major entries. And the audit, as a reminder, will be presented to the City Council at the June 18th Committee of the Whole Meeting. As in the past, after the CAFR is presented, which a CAFR is really the audit, but it's called a Comprehensive Annual Financial Report, it is presented to the City Council. And the presentation is by the City's auditors, Lauterbach and Eamon. Um, after we present the uh, audit, typically we come back to City Council with some recommendations on utilizing fund balance, and that will be discussed with the City Council. <laughs> Within the packet, like I mentioned, it's quite detailed per report. It does have a summary income statement, which is a year-to-date available budget report. We have a general fund year-to-date revenue detail report, major charts, uh, the transfers completed per the fiscal year 2018 budget, and all funds income statements, so that will cover all of the funds, and then a cash and investment summary report. For the general fund, uh, year-to-date budget, um, actually the budget for revenues were 32.8 million, and year-to-date unaudited results were 33.6 million, about 2%, 2.5% to be exact, uh, better than budget. Expenditures for budget for a general fund is 32.8 million, coming in for year-to-date is 32.1 million, about 2.3% under budget. So year-to-date fiscal surplus is about 1.5 million for the general fund, which means that if you bring in our uh, beginning fund balance of 9.5 million at the end of the year for 2017 with the year-to-date sur surplus, our ending estimated fund balance is about 11.1 for the general fund. It is our largest operating fund, so that's why we do cover that in the memo quite extensively. Uh, there are some commitments to fund balance which uh, $38,341 for prepaid expenses and a commitment for the $1.4 million for committed for compensated absences. <clears throat> when we net those out, it's about 9.7 available or unassigned fund balance. It's about a 30% uh, fund balance to expenditures ratio. And why that's important is that we're in fund balance range. So about 15 to 30% is our fund balance policy and we're at the top of the range. And so that's why we're going to be looking at coming back with some recommendations to the City Council for utilizing some of those uh, funds to uh, particularly for the city's pensions. And we'll come back with recommendations. What I wanted to just highlight um, at a high level, again, uh, some of the changes for revenues for the general fund. Uh, the City Council did approve to uh, change to its ambular ambulance fee structure, which did align the fees to, with some neighboring communities to recapture revenue. We also instituted video gaming in 2018 towards the latter part of the year, but it does affect uh, the overall financial picture for the city going forward. We had strong results for food and beverage taxes, so we had some great uh, changes in our restaurants coming through. We also um, 
had some changes in building permits and food and beverage as well. In the memo, there are some key economic uh, highlights. Uh, we have some highlights on building permit activity and then also our highest, uh, our top 10 employers for the city. Um, in terms of economic development activities, with new restaurants opening, of course, reps on uh, Dunkin' Donuts on Algonquin, um, Jersey Mike's to name a few. Uh, the city's comprehensive plan update uh, started and then the launch of our city's first business messenger for businesses, which engaged local businesses. So some great things happening in economic development areas. And that's all just detailed in the uh, financial report, which will also be highlighted in the city's audit. Just uh, as a summary on the other funds, just quickly moving on for local roads, which is one of our major capital uh, road projects um, to fund our roads. Um, it ended an improved net position as compared to previous years. And the ending fund balance estimates of roughly about 550,000. If you remember that, uh, to modernize the city's services, the city council um, approved a natural gas tax, which does replace vehicle stickers. We are monitoring that closely. We have had some residents stopping by to let the finance department in particular know that they do appreciate not having to purchase the vehicle stickers. And again, that does generate revenue to the road fund um, and invest more into roads and repairing and resurfacing. The 911 fund, another operating fund for the city, pays for all of the city's emergency dispatch services through Northwest Central Dispatch, <coughs> police and fire radios and emergency communications. Again, that fund balance estimate is an important one. We do have a fund balance policy that's ending in about 1.2 million for the year to date, and there will be some capital improvement projects in 2019. I'm just gonna summarize for utilities fund and refuse fund because there's a lot of detail in the report itself, um, but they're a little bit above target and revenues for general fund or for the utilities fund and for the refuse fund coming in on target too. A lot of good charts and graphs in the report itself uh, and they're at the end of the report but the cash and investment summary position uh, detailed in the report itself and the unaudited cash position for December 31st shows about 32 million across all funds with the majority of that held in the general fund, 46% of total cash. Uh, just as a reminder too, we have commitments on that cash. Um, the city did issue as a footnote, general obligation bonds in the city's fire stations project uh, in December. And also we were, uh, because of our bond rating, we were able to issue those funds at a premium. And then after our credit rating review with Standard & Poor's, uh, the city did maintain, very proudly, its double A plus rating, uh, which all did factor into the bond issuance. With that, that's sort of the high level overview. There's a lot of detail in there, and uh, that's the present presentation of the fourth quarter financials. Thank you, Ms. Gallagher. Thank you. Uh, moving on to the traffic review committee. Um, in Fred's absence, Rob, will you be Manning this? Yes, thank All you, right. Mayor. Um, we uh, met on Wednesday the 5th, uh, discussed six items um, of particular interest to the council. Uh, there's a uh, major capital project that we're going to be doing this summer on Barker Avenue. Uh, the bridge will be closed. Uh, currently, that's proposed as starting on June 5th. Uh, we are talking to the contractor about moving that to the following Monday to not impede the uh, the uh, black party uh, however if it if it has to be that day we have prepared a, a signage plan to um, tell motorists uh, how to navigate and not um, end up dead ending at our black party um, the other item of interest uh, is item number six uh, the Kirchhoff Road bridge, bridge maintenance project uh, it is on schedule we met with the contractor Monday at 11 a.m. Uh, they're on schedule uh, so long as the rain uh, holds up. They will be out of there in sufficient time. Um, our contractor will remobilize for the Kirchhoff Road um, uh, paving to mill that area out when the, when the state contractor leaves. So no problems with that so far. Nice. So that's my report. Thank you, Rob. Sure. Um, back to Manager Crumstock, the May 21st, 2019 Committee of the Whole Agenda. Thank you, Mayor and City Council. Obviously, uh, you have six items in front of you. Um, if you thought that tonight was going to be short, we're making it up for this meeting at the Committee of the Hall. Um, the first item will be newly elected um, officials training. I guess that we should say all elected, not newly, um, but elected officials training. Um, City Attorney Jim McCall will be running that. Um, you will all be receiving um, homework and books at the end of it. So. Um, 
The next one is Census 2020 and the complete count um, committee. We have to have a discussion with that, obviously, next year. And if you read in the newspaper, many municipalities are starting com the uh, complete count committees. So hopefully this will be something that um, we do like last year. It's another way of getting communication out to the residents about what uh, the census actually means. Obviously, it's been a few months, but we want to bring back community development and public works update. Um, obviously, all of you know that we've changed some of the permits that we have and some of the other pieces. Um, we do want to bring that back, and it's not the last time that we will be having discussions in 2019. Obviously, as we've mentioned before, the community sign on Quinton Road, there will be a discussion on that and the summary of the meeting that we had with all the other pieces. We will also be having a discussion about tree lighting relocation for 2019. This is something that Community Event Foundation and actually staff have talked about in the past and actually some other aldermen have talked about this in the past. So we're ready to have that conversation with everybody and um, hopefully that will be supportive. The last one that we have scheduled for this one would be the hotel internet tax for most of the uh, Alderman know that we've had past discussions about this. Um, obviously, we were part of a suit um, and it was thrown out of court. Now, many municipalities are starting to pass their own hotel internet tax, and that will be the six items that we have scheduled. Um, and July is already uh, pretty booked, too. But those are the items that we have ready for the committee at all. Thank you, Manager Crumstock. Are there any matters not on the agenda? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, just a couple of questions or a couple of comments. Um, in the last two weeks, I got a, an awful lot of phone calls, and there's two main subjects. Um, unfortunately, even though it is National Public Works Week coming up, uh, a number of people were upset about pothole situation. Obviously, Public Works is well aware of it, but uh, I pointed out a couple streets that people made me aware of that need to be refixed. So I think as the weather gets better, if it ever gets better, um, hopefully they can fill them in sooner than later. Um, but I, I, that's, that's all for right now. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Anybody else have matters not on the agenda? Mr. Mayor, uh, yes. just to follow Mr. Kenna, I had a couple calls recently. It just uh, was great to see in the packet, potholes following up on uh, Alderman Cannons, is seeing that Oriole Lane between Kirchhoff and Campbell are going to be taken care of in the, the projection that we uh, reviewed tonight, as well as a, a couple of residents. And Barry, Fred, and Rob have been great about flooding off of the new bike path off of Euclid. So staff's on top of it. They've met with a couple of residents, but uh, that was something that was brought to my attention over the last week. Nice. Thank you. Um, with that, no more matters not on the agenda. Then is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Thank you, Alderman Cannon. Thank you, Alderman Budmetz. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.